Hi, I'm Russell Anderson. This is Maker Size. In this episode, I'm going to address a question that I get quite a bit, which is, where do I get my scrap? Several videos ago, I mentioned that a friend gave me 400 pounds of miscellaneous scraps, things like transmission housings, intake manifolds, alternators, oil pumps, that type of thing. I need to break those down into small enough pieces to melt them down. I really am right at the end of the metal that I got out of the first batch. He gave me a transmission housing and an engine block about three or four years ago. And that's what I used for all of the metal lathe project, as well as the first handful of castings in the shaper project. I've been switching over to lost foam casting and the ram cap turned out just great. The ram, however, did not turn out at all. There is extended cut footage of this process available to Patreons right now. Long story short, I didn't have enough sand on top of the pattern. It's a fairly large casting, so the, the pressure of the molten aluminum kind of broke through and caused this part to fail. So I'll probably melt this back down, but I wanted to have it for comparison's sake to kind of show you know, what happened versus how it should have gone. When I cast the ram, it took every last piece of scrap that I had in the shop. I was going around and robbing different things just to try to get a full enough crucible to cast that part. It is a fairly large part. Before I can attempt that part again, I need to make the ram pattern again, and I need to have some scrap. So that's, that's what this is. This is about 10 and a half kilograms, probably about 23 pounds, 25 pounds, something like that. I initially tried using my bandsaw. And then I tried just kind of brute force uh, with a splitting maul to break it up. Uh, neither one of those really worked too well. The circular saw worked great. It is probably something that I don't recommend anybody try unless you want to take your safety into your own hands. I actually ended up starting without gloves on and some of the uh, pieces, shavings or whatever hit my hand and it started to bleed so I put on gloves, had the full face shield. It's, uh, it's a little bit harrowing but uh, it's way faster than the bandsaw and it, it's actually possible to break it up. The intake manifold probably was cast with an alloy that's good for sand casting, such as A356. I assume this based on observation of the surface texture of this particular casting. When I look at the main bearing cap and the rocker arms, however, I see a smooth surface finish, and that suggests these parts have been die cast, possibly from an alloy like A383, which has a higher copper and zinc content than A356. They both have similar silicon content. The ideal alloy is one that's designed to cast in sand, so things like the intake manifold are great. Things that have been die cast are probably fine, but uh, ideally you'd want something that's been sand cast. Big chunks like this are uh, really kind of hard to get sawed up with the circular saw just because there's not quite a good way to get at some of the components as well as this cylinder head uh, i'm not going to be able to scrap this just using the circular saw oil burner for scrapping purposes is in my future if you like that idea and you'd like to see me you know my take on an oil burner let me know. Uh, I could even maybe put together some plans if it sounds like there's a big interest in that type of thing. But this amount of scraps should get me through at least casting the ram. There's a fair amount of bolts and things that you could reuse if you wanted to be very meticulous, but as far as efficiency, uh, the bandsaw and kind of piecemeal disassembling stuff just it isn't efficient. So that's kind of why I switched over to the circular saw. Hopefully uh, this week I can continue uh, recast the RAM, get that part finished, and maybe even fit into the channel on the shaper. I hope this video builds your confidence to exercise your inner maker. Thanks for watching.